Hello, this is Heather Droshi, and this is the Trompe l'oeil drawing demo, part one. Trompe l'oeil is French for trick of the eye. Here's the line drawing. So this is what we need for the first part of this project. So we're not developing the values or the shades, the middle tones, the highlights quite yet. We're just using a line to mark the boundary of each of our objects. Um, and what you're going to be making is a collage on another 11 by 14 sheet of paper. Um, use flat things, stickers, tickets, small, like I had the, these little like glasses cleaner packages, scrap paper, anything that you have around your home. It could tell a story about you and um, arrange it in a way that's like aesthetically pleasing so I got some of those kind of paper tabs from a sketchbook made them into an X so I was thinking of them as sort of like a directional force that would kind of lead the viewers eye to the like upper left hand corner lower right hand corner um, just kind of activating the entire um, picture plane and um, yeah also thinking about dispersing like darker values so there's that ticket step to the right that vertical oriented truck rectangle is really dark and then some of that blue tape kind of balances out that dark shape so um yeah while I was drawing I just had that flat collage right next to my 11 by 14 sheet of paper the blank one all you need is a mechanical pencil thin pencil and an eraser of your choice so um yeah as with all drawings you start with a lightly drawn gesture um because you, you will inevitably have to make corrections so you don't want to make big dark lines quite yet um, and I guess yeah here's some tips that are specific to this trompe l'oeil drawing since it is to like a one-on-one -on -one kind of scale um, right now I'm just kind of lining up the collage with the um, drawing to the left and I'm making sure that those horizontal kind of lines are matching up so I get the right height for each of the scraps of paper um, you can also call this a level line. So to think about like level ground. Um, and also, um, as with everything, look at the negative shapes more than the positive shapes. So I'm looking at that sort of squashed trapezoid kind of shape between the paper tabs and then that kind of test sheet I have with the scribbles. You can also check the vertical lines within your drawing, within your collage, and see how they match up. Um, these are called plumb lines. So we'll just take a look at the gesture once more. So just look at the, the outside of each of your torn sheets of paper, stickers, whatever you choose to draw. And then once you get those basic shapes, you can start getting those minute details, such as maybe like a serrated edge, a tear. I drew dashed or dotted lines to describe um, objects that might be kind of peeking out through a piece of paper that was overlapping it. Here, as I get more confident, I start making darker lines. And still, I am not getting quite into the text at this stage. I'm just going in bit by bit. So after getting the boundaries of each of your objects, you can start filling in the text, the logos, graphics, shapes you might see. And um, as far as text, uh, try not to just resort to handwriting. If there's any sort of font, uh, try to match that to the best of your ability. Um, also be wary of kind of the spaces in between words. I also have some advice for complicated patterns. So um, the back of this um, Band-Aid package, um, it has the logo for a quate, it has a little graphic of a Band-Aid, arrow, so there's a lot going on. So what you want to do is simplify it. Um, so what I did was I thought about each kind of repeated section as a um, rhombus, and then I filled in the detail. Um, so try to find that kind of like, it's like a big pattern that governs the entire shape. So uh, here is the line drawing matched up with the collage. Uh, so it seems simple enough, you know, it's all, you know, flat sheets of paper and stickers. And it, again, we're just making a line drawing, but don't underestimate the time and effort it'll take. Um, it is very precise. You do have that one-on-one -on -one kind of scale, so it drives you to look like, be extra careful. So um, 
it's laborious, but I guess it's kind of, you know, listen to some good music while you're drawing or some interesting podcast and um, enjoy the process of creating your trompe collection drawing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be posting the second part pretty soon. Bye!